face I will call upon the name of the Lord He'll save me And He'll set me free I will call upon the name of the Lord He'll save me And He'll set me free hey, I will call upon the name of the Lord And when you come down to the verse 17 He, say, he says that I will offer unto the Lord The sacrifice of thanksgiving Tonight our God deserves our thanksgiving. He deserves our thanksgiving. He deserves our thanksgiving. We want to put our hands together. We want to close our eyes. And we want to say, Lord, you deserve my thanksgiving. You deserve my thanksgiving because you have made it possible for me to be here. You deserve my thanksgiving because I'm standing in your house. Not by anything. But by everything that you have done for me Come on, lift your voice Lift your voice all over this place And give unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving Give unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving I want you to open your mouth and begin to offer unto the Lord The sacrifice of thanksgiving The sacrifice of thanksgiving The sacrifice of thanksgiving The sacrifice of thanksgiving, of thanksgiving. He's been good to us Raya House Chapel, the latter rain center. When you go upstairs, you will see what I mean. If I say the Lord has been good. You want to close your eyes at this time. And lift up your hands. And say, Lord, I am glad to be in your house. For David said, in the house of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. He said, I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. So come on, lift up your voice and begin to tell him how grateful you are. Lift up your voice and begin to honor him with a sacrifice of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear you say, Lord, I thank you. 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 I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I honor you. Because you deserve it. Because you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Our strength has been by your grace, Lord. And we are grateful tonight. Captain of Israel's host and guide, oh, for who seek the land above. Come on, lift up your right hand to the heavens. Thy shadows we abide the clouds of thy protective love. Sing, Captain, Captain of Israel's host.
hands and your hands lifted. We come before the King of Kings.
So this is the storeroom for our that area in terms of have personal. Okay.
weddings, honorings, engagement, baby showers, baby dedications, wedding showers, bridal showers, and all kinds of social birthday parties. Yeah. My God and my Lord, when people walk into this temple, let them know that the Lord of God stepped here. Yeah. Let them know that the Lord of God has prophesied on this ground. Yeah. That when people come to celebrate other people's children, by the time they are living, let them be pregnant. Yeah. When people celebrate other people's work, by the time they are living, let their partners be together. Yeah. takes over. I just want to formally welcome all of you to Royal House Chapel, the Letter Ray Center here in New York. Today is a great day for us. God has honored his word and that which he began with us, he has completed with us. Hallelujah. 
we, 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 we began this project during Corona, but God has been faithful. That which he said he will do, he has done it. And uh, man of God, you, you prophesied that when we purchase this place, people will begin buying homes. And I say to the glory of God, for the past 10 years I started pastoring this church. This is the year I have dedicated houses more than any other, any, any other year. I even have some to dedicate as I speak. Every word that you spoke, like the word of God says, none of some words were fell to the ground. Every word that you spoke came and has come to pass. I want to welcome you and thank you very much for coming here with us today. Royal House Chapel, we are excited for what God has done. And I want to acknowledge the presence of some of our dignitaries here today. Pastor James, all the way from Massachusetts, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. Pastor Wallace, we appreciate you very much for being here with us. Our own auntie, Auntie Rev, we acknowledge you. And uh, our apostle is here. You will hear his voice soon. Mama Mina and Apostle, we welcome you very much. And I know that we have named the hall Sam Kranchankra Banquet Hall. I know that people will think that we took the inspiration from the fact that AG is the AG. He's the founder and the leader of the church. That is why. But our inspiration goes more than just that. Because we have we realized and we experienced his personal effort, commitment into making that which we have today to come to being. And uh, man of God, permit me to tell them, the Apostle General has put into this building his personal, I'm saying personal money. And the reason why I'm saying his personal money is that I stood there seeing him. Maybe some of you have forgotten. When we were in 901, when we got this place, I brought him here. And he looked at the place. Other people saw it and thought that nothing could happen. But say, the way you just spoke to me, I knew that it was from God. And it inspired me. Because... Others thought it was not possible, but his question was, you want to have church here? I said, yes. He said, God is with you. It shall come to pass. And I, I remember that day, you stayed here for so long that you caught cold. And the reason for which he came to America, he couldn't do it because he was not well. Not that alone. After some months, you came back to 901, and you asked us to uh, give an offering, a seed of $5,000. Some of us gave. But what touched my heart that day was that after everything, you sign a personal check of $5,000. And he said, for me and my wife, we are also sewing into it. I mean, why, why shouldn't we name this after you, man of God? As if that was not enough. As if that was not enough. You came in one day at the hotel in Terrytown, and we were just about to start the project. We were waiting for the approval. But we had to pay an amount of $4,000 to the building department for trees. And the person asked, Pastor Joe, how fast? He said, we need $4,000. So, oh, give me my bag. And you took your personal check again, and you signed $4,000 for me to give to them. <laughs> Apart from that, the man of God has given other things to make this come into reality. And the last one that touched my heart was that when we're about to do the closing for the building, I was told we are paying $33,000. Less than a week, they said $100,000. And I told the apostle, and I said, I will see what we can do. I started collecting. And you told me I should come pick you to the bank so that you sign your personal check and even see if you can get whatever you can gather to give to me. I told the Lord, Father, this is too much. Father, make a way. And you prophesied to me that it will, the God will make a way. And you know something? That Monday morning, I decided not to call you. But you rather called me and said, Remember, Joe, come and let's go to the bank. I am ready. As a man of God, your prophecy has come to pass. We have had the $100,000, and so everything, will, everything is okay. I mean, if this is not enough, why shouldn't we name this building after the Apostle General? And so, man of God, we want you to understand that you have your, you have your hand in it, your resource in it, your prayer in it. Mama, I mean, Mama Rita and the Apostle General, you have a lot to do in making this a reality. And so you are part of this building. Hallelujah. Reverend Emmanuel, your encouragement and even trying to gather other pastors to bring their substance to help us was a sign of good leadership. I want to appreciate you, Mama Mina. You were part of it also, and we bless you. And to all the missions of Royal House Chapel North America, you all did extremely well to make us get to this far. I want to appreciate the building committee 
is to look at all your, Mr. Tony, Tony and all your people, they were here almost every day in the pandemic, every day. What we did was that we drew a, I brought the military in this time, man of God, we drew the, the duty roster. And so somebody would come in the morning and come in the evening to make sure that, and they went by it. Everything went very well. And I want to single out my rich Mama Mina, Mama Betty, for her expertise in financial management. When we began, we needed to collect credit cards and loans, and it was so much, so difficult to manage because you have to meet everybody's mouth. I told Mama Betty, the way things are going, you need to stop work. And she stopped working for two years. And we stayed together, managing and ensuring that none of those who gave their credit cards missed their payments. And as I speak now, all loans, all credit cards are met. We are paying them because of expertise. We tried to use other but it was not working. But God blessed us with something. You know, we have everything in house, in house, and we need to recognize them. Mama Betty, I want to appreciate you for your support and everything and making this a reality. Before I take my seat, I want to invite the Apostle of North America, Reverend Manuel Agomeda, to break us a greeting. Somebody say, wow. Oh, come on, say, wow. You know, I cannot see your smile, but one thing I can... I can, I can hear, it's your clap, can you put your hands together? And, uh, but what I mean, I come, come and stand. <laughs> and we want to celebrate Reverend Joe and Mama Betty. Can we rise up, celebrate them, go ahead, do it properly. No, you have to you have to do it well. If you are building your own house, it's easy. If you are buying your own house, it's easy. But when you are doing something for God, the attacks are many. The resistance is strong. But for them to avail themselves. And, and the reason why I ask you to stand is because I remember years ago when he had to be released from Maryland to come here. And at um, East Tremont, I mean, I could preach in that building and I would be drenched in sweat. I mean, I, I, I wasn't getting under the story, he himself. And we thank God. And when this property was found, somebody would ask, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because it was basically a shell with a lot of work to be done. But when a man takes a step and sees a beautiful church building, sees banquet hall, sees a children's facility, sees something inside. What nobody sees, that person deserves credit. Come on, put your hands together. So Reverend Joe Mama Betty, we love you and we celebrate your hard work and we recognize your achievement. As for Apostle General, I won't even go there. Reverend Joe has said everything. But why were you talking about money that he gave you that I'm sitting here and you know at the top he was telling you that he pay his money. I don't like that. <laughs> Please be seated. I don't like that. You are trying to evoke some things. <laughs> and I want to recognize our papa and our mommy, the Apostle General Mama Rita. God bless you for the love that you have for for us, not just being our father, right house, chapel, churches, uh, but all your sons and daughters, you have a way of putting us together. You have a way of loving us in a very unique way. We really appreciate you. We love you. We celebrate you. Making the time in the pandemic to fly to come and do this, we are happy and we are excited. I want to read something from Genesis 21, verse 6 and 7. This is what Sarah said. The Sarah said, that the Lord has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there is a time that when God speaks, you may look at it and think that it will not happen. For when the angel said to Sarah, you shall be with child, she laughed. But that laughter was a laughter of disbelief, unbelief. But sometimes God himself doesn't really care about what you think about what he's saying. And at the same time, when Isaac was born, Sarah said, God has made me laugh and all who here will laugh with me. That laughter number one is called the laughter of surprise. May the Lord surprise you with laughter. Oh, I said, may the Lord give you a laughter of surprise. Because what you are not even expecting, the Lord will bring to you. The second one is the laughter of an answer for your enemies. All those who thought that Royal House Chapel, latter rain, will remain at uh, East Tremont, will be under a herald of a landlord, landlady. We thank God that God has put them to shame. And listen, when the Lord does it for you, those who here will laugh, sometimes they don't want to laugh. But because everybody is laughing, they are forced to laugh. I see your enemies turning you in your celebration. I see the naysayers celebrating and honoring you. Can you shout and receive it? But the final thing in this scripture is that this is also a laughter of fulfillment. That every promise God has made to you will come to pass. His promise still stands. And great is his faithfulness. When the man was leaving Maryland together with his wife to come, they didn't know what was waiting for them. The first things they met was resistance and trouble. But, but, God is a God who honors his promise. The Lord has brought them. This is what we are saying now. And we thank God. And we celebrate God for fulfillment. God bless you. May God fulfill everything that concerns your life. Thank you very much, Apostle. You all realize that because of the COVID, AG has been in America just once. This is the second time. The first time he had to go to Maryland, of course, that's the headquarters, and we appreciate that. He was there with Mama Rita. Today, he's not just here with Mama Rita, which tells the difference. <laughs> oh, yes, the difference is very clear. But we are in the financial capital. And so, Mama Richard and Apostle General came with their second son, daughter, Lady Dekan Nadromo Panchiankra, who is here with us. And uh, latter rain, you should, you, you, we, we understand. Remember, Ma, we can't, I mean, we can't apologize for that. It's not our fault. But this is the last time they are coming in this year. Next year, we will see what God will do. But we are here, Lord, we appreciate you. So whilst we're talking, one of my colleagues, a very good friend for over 30 years, is here with us today. Brigadier General Asari, that most of you know, is here with us today. He is a military advisor to the Ghana Permanent Mission to the United Nations. A very, very good man, a God-fearing man. When my, my wife's mother died, he's one of the people in Ghana, who really championed and made everything successful. Sir, you are welcome, sir. Thank you. Now, I have the privilege to invite the prison showers to give us administration before the man of God takes over. Hallelujah. Our purpose have said it all. We are just grateful to God for how far he has brought latter rain temple. I mean, if it's not God, what else can it be? Tonight, our song ministration is very simple to encourage you. No one knows. Amen. Hey. 
thank you Lord Hallelujah From the rising of the sun Till it's going down His faithfulness is sure Your mercy is ever new From the rising of the sun The rising of the sun Till it's going, till it's going down, down your faithfulness is sure. His mercies ever new. Your mercies ever new. From the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. Till it's till going, it's going down. down. Your faithfulness is sure. Your mercies ever new. Your mercies ever new. From the rising of the sun. The rising of the sun Till it's, it's going down Your faithfulness is sure Your mercy is ever new No one knows Like I know What you done for me that's why I praise you the way I do No one knows Like I know What you done for me That's why I praise you the way I do From the rising of the sun From the rising of the sun Till it's going down Your faithfulness is His mercy's sure. ever new Your mercy's ever new From the rising of the sun From the rising of the sun It's going down it's going down His faithfulness Your faithfulness His mercy's sure. ever new Your mercy's ever Say new
delivered us from a mighty place and he set our feet upon the rock you see I don't know what to do but I know I still have to praise my God see I will shout it wouldn't be enough and I will sing it will be enough but I sing my praises I sing my praises my praises my praises General, without much wasting time, church, let us be on our feet as we welcome the Apostle General, the most reverend San Francisco Angra.
Lift up your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Improve the sound, please. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We acknowledge your presence tonight. And we celebrate your goodness and your grace over this ministry. And over your man servant and his wife and family and leadership. We thank you. We thank you that tonight each and every one will receive an inspiration. And every faith that is dead here will be ignited. Amen. For us to know that if God has done this one, because you are the God of progression, you will do another for yeah. us. We give you praise and we give you honor. Yes, we Lord. celebrate the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And we celebrate the presence and the mighty power and manifestation of your word. We ask yeah. that tonight, give yourself a prophetic word for this house. Yeah. That I will declare the hidden things and even the treasures of darkness shall come out. I pray, Father, give me the power and the edge that I should be the prophet that will bring the pandemic to an end and to declare America free. Let it be that my presence in America is the presence that will cause President Trump to start putting the process for the transfer of power to Joe Biden. Let it be that my presence in America will be the presence that will come that will move heaven so that those who are jobless will have jobs to do my god and my lord i pray that this pandemic will put them the pandemic under our feet and we rule over it and we control over it because greater is he that is in us and we bless you that in the realms of the spirit we are seated with jesus christ in the heavenly place we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus mighty name, the saints of God shout a big amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. So, there's going to be a smooth transition. Trump will leave office by the 20th of uh, January. The losers are not clapping for Jesus. Losers, come on. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Can I hear somebody give me a shout of an amen here? Hallelujah. And so please make sure that the television networks are working, especially uh, those outside, so they can have a feel of what is happening inside, so they don't get too bored. I see some uh, people in the overflow. I want to acknowledge the presence of the senior pastors from Royal House Chapel, uh, uh, America, who are here. Uh, shall we acknowledge the presence of uh, Reverend Hazel Bediaku? From the Garden City of New Jersey, come on, honor the our Deborah, Reverend Thomas Brew, Jesus. Your your son is not doing well. Your son, you know, I will be complaining. Uh, I'm, where I'm coming from, the son is quality, so I can't come to America. I am told that this is the economic uh, city. What did you say? Eh? Financial hub. Look at this microphone in my hand, and you are telling me financial hub. Kaya labosa kaya. Clap your hands. I said the Lord will do it. Say the Lord will do it. Come on, give the Lord a man a shout of praise. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. All right, this level is good. This level is good. This level is good. Amen. So, uh, Reverend uh, Thomas Brew, all the way from Connecticut Victory Center. Come on. Thank you. Let's honor uh, a son of this house, trained here and then released to uh, Brooklyn, where he started the work over there. Reverend Wallace. And the wife, Sally, Mr. and Mrs. Hallelujah. Shall we also honor? Uh, are you the one from Buffalo who's going to? Okay. CM. Oh, let's honor our, our, our pastor from. God bless you. Let's honor our pastor from Massachusetts, Reverend James Safon Kuma Kuma. Did you come with somebody? With two people. Where are those from Massachusetts? Let's, let's honor the Massachusetts delegation. 
Come on, give it up to them. Reverend Bedia, could you do? Where are your people? Those from New Jersey, where are you? Come on, stand up. Let's honor. Oh, hallelujah. The next time we gather, we shall be dedicating your temple. Oh, I don't like the celebration in this place. Somebody shout out, receive my portion. Wow. Hallelujah. Reverend T, did you come with some people? There are two people on their way coming. All right. I wanted to acknowledge uh, them. Uh, we've we've had uh, from Connecticut. Oh, yes. Thomas is at the back. Please, let's welcome Lady uh, Leader Thomas. Come on, go ahead. We have already acknowledged Reverend Emmanuel Agomeda and his wife. They have brought us a prophetic greetings already. I want to know if there are other people who follow them from Maryland. So we will celebrate them. Anybody from Maryland? Um, all right. Sure, sure. Brooklyn. Where are Brooklyn? Come on, let's honor Brooklyn. Let's honor Brooklyn with a magic lamp offering. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Uh, any any mission here that we haven't introduced? Any other mission here we haven't introduced? All right, so now uh, you need to welcome those of us who flew from the Atlantic, over the Atlantic. Uh, oh, shh. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. If you want a miracle, you have to celebrate us because the, uh, <laughs> those who bless us are blessed. Those who curse us, they are in trouble. So if you're a man and woman, don't celebrate us and see the dreams you have tonight. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. All the way from Accra, Ghana, the capital and the headquarters of Royal House Chapel, where it all began. Please, a contingent of one, two, three. Honor. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. At this juncture, I'd like you to hear the voice of your mother. Please welcome Reverend Rita Crunchy Ankara. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can smell miracles in the air. I can smell breakthroughs in the atmosphere. I can see marriages being celebrated here. I can see pregnancies and babies. I can see people opening their own companies. You, you don't understand me. My darling, from where I come from, in Ghana, what we see is an impossibility. Are you listening to me? This one in the city of New York. Bronx. Where there is no space. You have to queue to park. When you go out and you are coming, you are praying, God, let me get a parking space. People sleep in their cars overnight. Because they couldn't get a place to park. My darling, is this the same place I see? God said to Abraham, what do you see? He said, come up, come out from your tents. Look up 
and count the number of stars you see. As you see, so shall it be. My darling, for your feet stepping here, for your eyes seeing this building and the Samkratyagra building, I am here to prophesy to you that every impossibility will be made possible in your life. Whatever you have asked God, it doesn't matter how difficult it is. It doesn't matter how hard it is. I am here to tell you that you will get it. You are looking for green card, it is yours. You are looking for American citizenship, it is yours. You are looking for marriage, it is yours. You are looking for a, a, a not whatever. You are looking for a good paying job in this season of pandemic. You will receive it. And that's what made your true. I've always known you have made your true. Whether you become a person, it is still made your true. And your wife, God bless you. For what you have done for the kingdom, listen, the generations after you will read about you. Your name, I don't know if you, you're not correcting fluid here. You're not correcting fluid. Remember, Emma, what is correcting fluid here? Wipe out. Reverend Major too. Even when they use wipe out, your name will never be wiped out. If people use felt pen, your name will never be cleaned out. May your name be a household name. May you be remembered. May your tears be placed in a bottle that forever heaven will look at that tear and remember you. May laughter be your portion. Just like you have caused people to celebrate, so will you be celebrated. You thought you were honoring your father by placing his name on this. Your name will be placed on buildings. God bless you. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, somebody say, Forgive me. Forgive me. Because I have believed in a lie. And I have believed in a lie. That you were unable to help me. That, that you were not able to help me. But now, but, but now, now, oh Lord, Lord, I see, I see my Lord. Clap your hands and say, heal my heart, come on. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart, and in my heart. 
lesson number one. Now, every Sunday, you have to watch me at a Hinfie before you come to church here, okay? Because we have five hours difference. So when I come here, you don't struggle the way you are struggling. If you've been watching me, you will know the way I operate. So you prepare before I come. The next time I come here, you give me troubles like this. You will see your mother and your father. Shall we give God a mighty come on that bridge, God? He was giving me some problems over there, man. Reverend, he said, you didn't come to teach him properly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Minister, look, you are welcome. Take your... God bless you. So, am I, am I excited about uh, a banquet hall called Sam Crunchy Ankara? Not, not really. Because that thing there for as long as I live and as long as I visit this church will bring memories of my troubles in this place. Major General, can you imagine I leave my huge church in Accra, my TV ministry, my radio ministry, my apostolic ministry, and I come to New York here for a revival, and the pastor in charge meets me at the gate when I'm able to enter, and the message he gives me is that, Reverend, I'm so sorry, you won't have a full house today. Because everybody has gone to work. And here nobody helps. So I'm the only person doing everything. That's a message I receive when I am, I've left Accra, Ghana, and I'm coming for a three day revival at the gate. And I enter into the room and Thomas, I can count five people. Come to listen to Apostle General. Five in this, in this city. But I have a certain enduring anointing. You can't, you can't put me on the carpet. You can't put me down. Whatever you do, I'll rise. And, and I'll shake myself and I'll break through that. I'll release that spirit in this house. I know how to endure. I know I, I don't lose battles. I don't lose. I fall, I rise again. So, first day, I start preaching with five people. Second day, Friday, the room is half full. By the time I am finishing Sunday night, the room is packed and packed to the back. Three days. It was in one of these meetings that he, she encountered the oil upon my life. I gave her powerful prophecy and the word and the deliverance that came to her house. Otherwise, this woman will not be sitting here singing right now. She is one of the people who have survived in this place and have never moved throughout the, all the struggles and the difficulties that we went through here. Are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? By the time I finish the three days, five days revival, James, and I'm leaving, by the time they pay my ticket back to Accra, and by the time we pay the, uh, the various expenses of the, of the program, I, I will not lie to you, this is an altar that I fear. I will leave an amount in those days, $15,000 in the account of New York. By the time I come back, the next time the money is finished. And when I, I and, and you won't see any change in the church, nothing has happened. The instruments are still breaking down. The choir is still three people. Still meeting on the uh, where were we meeting those days? Eh? 
grand concourse. Wooden structure. And then he used to tell me, Apostle Jim, and I wasn't Apostle General at that time, Reverend. Here in Bronx, it's difficult to do ministry. It's I said, ah, but I've just been here three days and I feel the whole place. So when I leave, what do you do for the people to scatter? What do you do? New Jersey, listen to me. New York, Connecticut, the few people who are here listen. And Brooklyn, if you are here listen. Massachusetts, those of you who are listening online. If you're in Maryland, you are listening, listen carefully. It is not easy to get men like this to run with a vision. It's not easy. For a man who will stand in the gap so that I don't destroy the land, but I found none. Oh, yeah, the whole of Israel, God didn't find yes, because he was looking for the right person, the right man with the right attitude, with the right spirit to lead. And I didn't get that. The ministry here struggled and we suffered until one day this doctor over there and his wife. And then some few people sent me SOS. It's Apostle General. Now your church in New York here is dead. There are no people in the church. So if you don't come, count yourself that you don't have a church here. I said, oh, this is a church I have labored for. I was coming here about two, two times a year. Labored, why? I left everything, I cried again, came and stayed here for two weeks. Then I brought Reverend Johnny, one of my associates who stayed here for six months. Then I brought Reverend Derek who came and stayed here for six months before this angel stepped in. Please be seated. Church, listen to me, I will not lie to you. When he came in, the other pastor had left a debt of $100,000. This man paid all. So now here comes my message. There is no way if you have any misunderstanding with him and you are angry with him, I will side with you against him. It's not possible. So don't, don't even go there. Don't, don't pray. Maryland, listen to me. Connecticut, listen. Brooklyn, Massachusetts, listen to me. It's not easy to raise sons. We are not saying they are perfect. They'll make mistakes. But when they make mistakes, you just, just pray. God will reveal their mistakes to me. I'll rebuke them secretly without you knowing I've rebuked them. But, 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 I mean, you, you know me from Accra. You are a member of Royal House Chapel from Accra. Now you are in uh, U.S. Uh, are you going to uh, uh, church? Uh, 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 no. Last time the pastor said something I didn't like. So I've stopped going to church. So, so when you come to Accra, will you come back to church? Even here, when I come, if you don't take time, even gift, I will not take from you. I did it in Connecticut. I told this guy, I don't like the way you are playing with a vision. And I don't like your, the way you are you know, undermining the pastor. I don't like it. Go and submit. He didn't listen to me. I got there, he wanted to take me for shopping. I said, take your shopping away. I, I don't like, you are not clapping, and I'm not, I'm not excited.
And then here's the second thing I'm saying. I'm not saying that he is here to pastor you until the age of 90. That's not what I'm saying. By all means, one day he will leave, another person will come. But for heaven's sake, as long as God is using him to do these great things, let us support him. Let's pray for him. Let's back him. So, so I've made, I've, I've made my, my, my point. And so those who think that they can have personal relationship with me, but they will not have personal relationship with the angel of the house, the people that I have empowered and have blessed and who represent my vision and my God and my ministry, oh, there's no way. There's no way I will come inside with you. Because your, the attitude you are, put, you are putting towards them if I didn't have anointing, I didn't have money. You put, you put up the same that attitude. Oh, are you clapping when you are kidding? And I hear somebody say amen. amen. But I prophesy over my sons. Whatever thing they want to see about you before they submit, they will see in the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing, they will see the anointing. Money, they will see it. Blessing, they will see the blessing. Clap your hands and shout, I receive it. And then finally, in the next 10 minutes, here's what I'll do, and then we'll enter into a time of worship and we'll just bless God. I am here in the prophetic anointing to stop the incursions of the enemy into your privacy. The, the amen was very weak. I am here to declare that whatever you are doing that has stored may an anointing for acceleration and anointing for speed come upon you. Who is this person that I am talking to? Please be seated. Let me bless you from 1 Samuel chapter 2 and 3 verses uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Four verses. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse number 6. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse number 6. So, this is Hannah ascribing glory to God because something tangible had taken place in her life. For many years she was barren and her rival mocked at her and laughed at her and did many, 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 many unthinkable things. When I was here last year, I gave you a prophecy. I'm expecting that you give me a, a, a word. A report. Is that okay? I spoke into your life when I was here last year. Okay. Say amen. amen. Don't, don't envy him. He's the only white man here. So we have to prophesy over his life. Are, are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? <laughs> Hallelujah. When you have a church and there's a white man, it means your church is international. <laughs> He's a white man. Oh, he's a proper white man. Okay. No, sometimes we get confused, you know, uh, between you and then uh, the other people, the Mexicans. Is that Mexicans? Uh, the brown and the color. So, are you black or brown? They, they call us people of people of color. Say amen. I really bless you, my son, and thank you for taking good care of our daughter. When do you want to be pregnant? Tonight? Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Your promises are yet and amen. You know.
Please be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I said, Amen. Amen. So, so she mocked him. She mocked her. She mocked her. She mocked her. And until one day, God just broke through for her. Now, in her praise to God, which is recorded in the second chapter of First Samuel, then she brings some powerful revelations that I'd like to share with you and then prophesy over your lives. Is that okay? Now, here are some of the revelations. In the verse number six, it says, The Lord kills and makes alive. <laughs> He brings down to the grave and he brings up. I am both shaky. Don't make a mistake and think that God doesn't have a choice. Tonight he has a choice to kill somebody and to raise somebody. I don't know who the Lord will kill and I don't know who the he has the ability to put into the grave and he has the ability to bring to life and i don't know who is coming out alive tonight i don't know who is coming i don't know who is coming clap your hands and say i am coming out clap your hands and say my father my father in case you have decided to kill me shake your mind because of your mercy your grace and this altar can you celebrate the goodness of the lord hey can i provoke you tonight when you wake up every morning don't think you woke up because you are beautiful and because you are handsome and because you are tall you woke up because god chose to bring you alive he has the ability to kill when you come to church and we are worshiping, humble yourself and worship because it's just grace. When we are showing sacrifices, show your sacrifices because it is just grace. He has the ability to raise and to bring down. Oh, who, you know who is talking here? There's a woman called Hannah. She experienced something, which is why she's telling you this. And we are going to come to where she, what she experienced in a moment. Father, I don't take the life you have given me for granted. I don't take it. I don't take it for granted, son. Son, they tell your congregation, the Apostle General said that. Oh, listen to Hannah. Listen to Hannah. Verse number seven. The Lord makes poor and the Lord makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. If today you can put food on your table, it is somebody who is doing it for you. If today you can pay your children's school fees, it is the Lord. Today, if you can buy fuel into your car, it is the Lord. I am told the Africans, when they come to this country, when they, we are, not, they are not documented, they are very humble. When they get documented and they buy a house, they don't respect anybody again. Nonsense. Pray that I don't come to pastor here. Pray. I won't tolerate all those nonsense in my ministry. You get documentation, it is God. You buy a house, it's God. You are a doctor, it's God. You are a nurse, it's God. You pass your examination, it's God. Are you better than those who have died under this pandemic? It's, it's God. Good Lord. In case you didn't sing the song properly, sing it again. No one knows like I know what you've done for me. What, what you've, you've done, done for, for me. me. That's why I praise you the way I do. No one knows, no one knows, like I know, like I know, what, what you've done, done for me, me. that's why I praise you the way I do, no one knows, no one knows, oh, 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 Listen to Anna. Listen to Anna verse 8. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the beggar from the ash heap. To set them among princes 
and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. I like verse 9. And verse 9 is a promise against the pandemic. He will guard the feet of his saints. But the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. Those who want to fight you with their physical strength, they will never prevail. With their money, they will never prevail. With whatever they have, they will never prevail. Whether it's from your father's house or your mother's house or in the office where you're operating, clap your hands and say, by strength, say by strength, no one will prevail. Say by strength, no one, no one will prevail. Hallelujah, he will guide your feet so that your feet will not walk into danger and into trouble. Wherever there is a pandemic and a virus, the Lord will circumvent you around the place. What would you do against a virus that is airborne and is all over the place? What would you do to a virus that can settle on a hard surface and you don't know who placed it there and the person leaves and you can? What can you do except God will guide your footsteps and protect you? Clap your hands and say, my father, protect me and guide me. Ever since I tell sister, God has given me some grace and I anointing. Now, one of the anointings is I have gotten closer to God and I know God very intimately better than when I was young. And so I can tell you some things about God that you don't know, but He's revealed to me. That, that comes with grace. When you walk with God for a long time, God commutes your knowledge of work with Him into anointing and into wisdom. I don't think I would like this one. Thank you. Thank you. You will distract us. Thank you. She was come to save water. But she would be distracting us. So he called for the water. No, I would, I would have, I would have, if he called for the water, I would have asked Reverend, Reverend Ima, have you made him Deputy Apostle General? <laughs> because I would have been surprised, because I know there's no deputy here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Alright, so, so Major General, here's one of the things that I'll be speaking for my gray hair, and you don't fight me, just take it, because I've worked with God. Okay, here's it. God doesn't create anything new. God doesn't create anything new. What he would want to create, he has finished. So the first test. I want you to pray a prayer and say, God, do something new in my life. Somebody, just, just pray that prayer. Let me see whether God will hear that prayer. What new are you going to ask God? God, give me money. Oh, God has given people money already. So when you get your money, it's not new. People already have it. God, give me a child. What do you mean? People have children already. So when God gives you a child, it's not new. God, give me a house. It's not new. Oh, God, give me a car. It's not new. If I walk you into the showroom, which car would you pick? You should have an idea of the car that you pick already before you go there. How do you know? Because you have seen one already. So it informs you that this is the kind that I'm looking for. I don't like the clap of it. I don't like I am. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Tonight, by the time I finish with you, there is nothing you have seen, you have desired, that you will never touch. You will touch it. Oh, can I hear somebody shout and say, I will save it. 
And I know that my pastors here who have done, become very good preachers right now are quoting Isaiah chapter 43 and 19 in their head. Behold, a new thing will I do, say the Lord. Oh, you should check that the, 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 that, that word uh, in, in Hebrew is Kodesh. Kodesh, not the Greek Kodesh. This is C-H-O-D-E-S, Kodesh. It's, it simply means that I will renew a thing. It means that the thing is already there and God will just add a new value. Somebody say, Lord, I receive my miracle. Clap your hands and say, Lord, I receive my miracle. So he's not going to do a new thing. He's just saying that he's going to renew a thing in your life. Maleba Katoni and Kabaya Kataya. Jochum, Jochum, we are celebrating Jochum. He has bought a, a, a building for the kingdom. It's paid for. Uh, uh, the bank has paid for it. All he pays for it is just mortgage. And uh, so far, he's on course. Kalabosh. Somebody say, I am on course. On say it again and say, I'm on course. And now he has added to the building San Franciancra Banquet Hall, which will be a place for socialization, uh, celebration of home calls, uh, weddings, um, uh, adorings, uh, baby showers, uh, naming ceremonies, dedication ceremonies, um, uh, uh, birthday parties. Sweet sixteens. Some of you will be celebrating your tenth wedding anniversary in that building. Some of you will be celebrating the birth of your twins in that building. Some of the job is shot out of seven. Just finished dedicating the building. The prayer and the blessing have left there. Kabo Sekiri and I. Yaboko Taya. Major Chum, unfortunately, you haven't done any new thing. What you are doing here, Reverend Emmanuel did in Maryland, and you saw it and it encouraged you, and that's what you are doing. So I am here to tell. Reverend T, I'm here to tell Hazel, I'm here to tell Wallace, I'm here to tell James, I'm here to tell all of you that what you see, God wants you to have it. God wants you to post. So God did not do a new thing for Hannah. What God did for Hannah he had already done for Hannah's rival, for which she saw and provoked her and said, God, if you can do it for my rival, why can you not do it for me? Oh, can I give you more? Before God did for Hannah in first Samuel chapter number one, God had done it for Sarah in Genesis. God had done it for Rebecca in Genesis. God had done it for Rahel in Genesis. What are you talking about? What new thing are you looking for? What else? Whatever you say and you desire and you pray, I give it to you. Calabose. Calabose. Receive your green card because somebody has it. Receive your citizenship because somebody has it. Receive your new house because somebody has one. Receive your new car because somebody has it. Receive. Let's 
be seated. That's why God brought you here to see this one. Because he wants to repeat himself again. He doesn't do anything new. He renews. One day, one day I wanted to purchase a parcel of land at one of the posh areas in Accra uh, called East Legon. So this guy who took me to inspect the parcel of land uh, wanted to excite me uh, so that uh, uh, I would drop money uh, because I could change my mind uh, based upon the pricing. So when we, we got there uh, to impress me, he said, you see that building? It belongs to bishops so so and so. I said, oh, wow. You see that one? It belongs to this Supreme Court judge. That one. I said, huh? and then he says, when you go here and you pass the left, that big house, with, uh, that is wall. That is Rollins' house. Roll. I said, hey, wow. I didn't know that the revolution people also put up houses. <laughs> I thought the revolution people... They just slept in the barracks and that's it. <laughs> so the guy was impressing me. So he said, oh, okay. Wow, so all the gurus are here. So okay, it's good to purchase the, 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 the land. So so that we have made the commitment. And then they started processing for me. And here's what I did. The one that they said belonged to the bishops. I know the bishop very well. As soon as I got home, then I called him. I said, are you in the office? I want to come and see you tomorrow. He says, oh yes. He, he didn't know why. When I went there, I took a seed of sacrifice. Then I went and sold the money. I said, I'm going to build. And I depointed your house to me. And since you have gone ahead of me, and since God doesn't do new things, But God does what we see and what we desire. I have seen your building. I also want one. So this is the seed. Then I sowed. Ladies and gentlemen, when I dug my ground and I built my house, my house was three times bigger than what he built. Are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? See, see, I told you already that pastors have come here and gone. Not all of them had the heart and the vision of their father, San Francisco, to do this one. When you have the opportunity to sow into the ministry of this man, it's a, it's a good ground. It's a man of vision. A man of heart. It's a good ground to sow. And, 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 and uh, Saturday I was doing uh, Jericho Hour at uh, uh, Living Faith. And uh, my pastors are around, Reverend Joe Truman, his wife, uh, Reverend Hazel, um, Wallace, and uh, um, others came there to support me with their, their elders. You know what? I made an altar call and I gave them prophecy. And I said, all of them must sow $500 into that altar. Because if a man like him has survived in New York, you too, you must survive. Are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? I made them so. And I told them they should watch and see whether they will have any regret for sowing seed into a holy altar and a potent altar. And for that matter, I was the one standing on the altar around that time. I said, hey, look. Tom, Thomas, all the pastors here, don't live here without sowing something to this ground. Because I promise you, Kodesh is about to perform in your life. Why would I sow here? I will sow here because I have seen the finishing of the banquet hall and I have seen the finishing of this one. 
I want to see the finishing of my oil dome. Yeah. Are you clapping or you are doing something like that? Why do you have to sow onto this ground? You have to sow because you have seen a building bought for the kingdom. As you sow, may you buy a building for your family. Can you clap your hands and say, I receive it? You have to buy one for your family. Can you bring the communion, please? I'm going to bless the bread and then the blood. We shall eat and we shall drink. And after that, we'll pray and then we'll go into worship. And then I'm going to be challenging you to come to the altar and do a prophetic act. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven, he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. By strength shall no man prevail. And this is a woman who was desperate for many years and was, was abandoned. Finally, when she broke through, she said, oh, this is the secret. When God orders your steps, he sends you to the altar at the right place to meet the priest at the right time. Yeah. I call that one divine movement or divine alignment. The ability to walk into a place at the right time. To meet the right person. To meet the right atmosphere. That is God. For the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Haven't you heard somebody saying that? Oh, I was thinking about you last week. You haven't heard that before? Why was I thinking about you last week? He was thinking about you last week, but he didn't find you. So what he should have done for you, he didn't do. At the time when you, he met you, he didn't have it again. And particularly it happens to me. There are many people I want to do kindness to them. But at the time I meet them, I don't have money in my pocket. So just last week I was just thinking about you. Unfortunately, I don't have anything here. Can we do it next week? Next week turns into one month. Uh, one month into it. It should not happen to you again. May the Lord order your steps so that you'll be at the right place at the right time. For the right miracle and for the right encounter. Can you clap your hands and shout and say, I receive it. I declare victory into these elements in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight is a miracle Tuesday night. And Father, we are believing that you repeat yourself in our lives. Remember, Ima, you know when God created the heavens and the earth and everything and the seventh day, what did he say? And the Bible says, God rested. And when God saw all that he had made, he saw that it was good. Right from creation, God was already looking at grace to grace. He saw it. Right from creation, God saw this building and he saw some Kranchankra banquet hall and he said it was good. He saw your daughter becoming a doctor Amen. before she was born. There's nothing new under the sun, our elders say. The only reason why you desired that car was it because you saw one being driven. The only difference is that the one you saw is 2018. 
But when you are going to buy, you buy 2021. That is the renewal of the old version. I speak Holy Ghost manifestation and visitation that tonight the blood will do what the flesh cannot do. The blood will do what the mind cannot do. Let the blood do what passport cannot do. And let the blood do what money cannot do. In the mighty name of Jesus. We call it done as we celebrate the opening of the San Francisco Banquet Hall. Which is a memory, oh God, of what your servants have done in this city in these years. I have cried, I have wept. I have seen disappointment, I have seen betrayal. But today I also see laughter and I see celebration. Father, I have come to share the celebration with the people and I have come to release impartation of grace and goodness. Anybody who eats the communion with me, Father, let the person be a partaker of the grace and a partaker of that miracle which is coming. In Jesus' mighty name, let the saints of God shout a big amen. amen. So, when you, when you get it, tear the uh, element and then separate the blood and then the body. We'll eat the body together, we'll drink the blood together, and after that we'll worship together, and I will invite you to take a walk to the altar. Deacons, we are ready. Let's do our worship, please. The blood that Jesus shed for me I need some more deacons or some pastors, junior pastors. Way back on Calvary. Start from the back. The blood that gives me strength. strength. Start from the overflow. From the That you want to touch, what is that you want to receive? My strength shall not be Yes, mountain. What are you looking for? God says the oil is here tonight, the power is here tonight. Your husband is coming, your wife is coming. That documentation is about to settle, that pregnancy is coming, that financial breakthrough is coming. Me I smell miracle in the atmosphere. We are in prayer. Separate the elements, please. Jesus. Jesus. 
the body. Where's the second microphone? Where's the other microphone? Kalabo Shake. Reverend T, can you release the power onto this bread? The body of Christ, which is broken for us. Shakado Sekirianda. Lift, it. Lift up the bread wherever you are. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. The Bible says that when you stood in front of the 5,000, the first thing that you did was that you lifted up the bread and you gave thanks. Father, as the bread is lifted above our heads tonight, Spirit of the living God, we make a declaration Hallelujah. that as we eat this bread, that Father, let there be a lifting. Yes. Father, as you lifted the bread, yes. Father, tonight we are being lifted. Yes. Father, we are being lifted. Anybody that has been put down, you are being lifted by the eating of the bread. Yes. As you lift up the bread, you are being lifted up out of sickness. Yes. You are being lifted out of poverty. You are being lifted out of struggle. Yes. You are being lifted out of shame. Yes. You are being lifted out of frustration. Yes. I prophesy over your life yes. that you are being lifted tonight. Yes. As you eat the bread, let there be a lifting in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. A lifting. A lifting. In Jesus. Lift up the bread. The body. Say, this is the body which is broken for me. This is the body that unites me and other believers, particularly in this house. By this body, I receive resurrection power and recovery and restoration in my life. If Jesus overcame death and the grave, there is nothing new. I also will overcome death and grave. In the name of Jesus, I will survive this pandemic. This pandemic will come and go and I will still be around and my faith will be working. I will still be worshiping. I will still be praying. I will still be loving and I will still be serving God. Father, I thank you for the victory of the body which is broken. Eat. Now the blood. Reverend Hazen, can you speak to the blood and then we will drink. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm. your word declares in Proverbs 23, 18, mm. surely there is an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tonight, mm. whatever that has fought us from the beginning of the year, tonight, as we partake of the blood, mm. it's coming to an end. Hallelujah. It is coming to an end. Hallelujah. It continues to say that our expectations will not be cut off. Yes. Tonight, by the drinking of the blood, Hallelujah. whatever we are expecting as a church, yes. whatever we are expecting as a family, Hallelujah. whatever we are expecting as a nation, Hallelujah. whatever we are expecting as individuals, Hallelujah. tonight, mm. because the blood was mm. shed for Hallelujah. us, and we are partakers of it. Calabushi. What we are expecting will not be cut off. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Our eyes are beholding what was in the time of womb. Hallelujah. And today it has been delivered. Yes. So will what we are expecting be delivered. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for the blood. Yes. That will wash every sin away. Yeah. That will wash every sickness away. Ha. Huh. That will wash every pain away. Yeah. That will wash every disappointment away. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. Yeah. That will restore unto us. Yes. What has already been said. Yeah. Father, there is a new renewal. Hallelujah. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We will receive of it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
You know what the Bible says? It says, great is thy faithfulness and thy steadfastness, for they are renewed every day. So God doesn't bring new grace. He renews it. When you study the Old Testament, there's a, a season they call the new moon. Oh, what new moon? It's the old moon, but when it appears at a certain season, it is called a new moon. It means that a new season is beginning. Oh, I can smell weddings and wedding ceremony at the San Francisco banquet hall. I can smell it. I can smell baby showers. I can smell bridal showers. I can smell celebrations. I smell it. I smell it. If you are the one I am talking to, shout and say, I am the one. Oh, somebody is celebrating 25th wedding anniversary there. Lift up the blood. Say, this is the blood. The source of my victory. My salvation. Victory over sin. Salvation from darkness. This is the blood that gives me power. To overcome evil spirits. Demonic strongholds. By the blood. By the blood. I begin a new season. A new life. Of new testimonies. Open heavens and opening doors. What I have seen and what I have heard and what I have celebrated, but I am yet to touch. I touch it in the name of Jesus. I touch it. I touch it in the name of Jesus by the efficacy of the blood. Now, in Royal House Chapel, we drink the blood and then we apply it. So when you drink, you leave a little. And then you, you, you sanitize the, your hand with the blood. The blood will do the work better than sanitizer. <laughs> Somebody say, I hear, I hear the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And you want, to, you want to apply the blood on your ears because your ears will hear testimony. Yes. And your eyes must see a miracle. Yes. Hallelujah. Drink and apply. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Reverend Chum, are you aware that every time I come here, I leave a miracle for you? Oh, yeah. Every time I come here, there is a major hurdle. He goes over. Every time. I remember the last one was the day they were signing for, uh, how do people call it here? They were closing. Closing of the property. It dragged for hours and I was, I was on my way to the airport. You know what? Before I entered into the plane, it was signed. He ran to the airport and submitted the document into my hand before I entered into the plane. I don't know whom I'm leaving a miracle with for this week. Oh, are you ready? Be on your feet. We are going to pray uh, just five minutes. We are praying from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 23. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 23. That's where we are praying from. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 23. Please, if you can read with a loud voice, scream it on top of your voice. Ready, go. You walk safely in and you're... You will never fall into armed robbers. You will never fall into murderers. You will never fall into accident. You will never fall into COVID. You will never fall into coronavirus. Clap your hands and say, My Father, order my steps. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Verse number 24. Verse number 24. Read with 24 with a, a loud voice because it's a miracle for somebody here. Ready, go. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep. I, I am so sure those of you suffering from insomnia, you didn't clap. You sleep and the devil wakes you up after one hour. It's over. Now, no devil will wake you up. You wake up when you, you feel like. Somebody clap your hands and say, I receive it. 
You will, your sleep will be sweet. Verse number 25. Read with a loud voice. Ready, go. Do not be. No. Clap your hands and say every fear. Every fear. Is overcome. Is overcome. Fear of coronavirus. Fear of coronavirus. Fear of death. Fear of death. Fear of accident. Fear of accident. Fear of losing my job. Fear of losing my job. It's over. 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 It is over. It is over. Are you ready for verse 26? You need a miracle in 26. Claim it right now. For will be your confidence. You will never be caught in accident and trouble. Jesus. Clap your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I invoke the word of God. I invoke the word of God. From Proverbs. From Proverbs. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Verse number 23. Verse number 23. 24. 24. 25. 25. 26. 26. Into my life. Into my life. My wife. My wife. My children. My children. In the name. In the name. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Pray. Pray. Somebody lift up your voice uh, and begin to pray. Oh, my sister. Uh, begin to pray. My boy and all of us. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray. Begin to clap your hand and begin to pray. Invoke problem. Chapter 3, verse 23, 24, 25, and 26. Into your family, into your life. Somebody pray. There will be a smooth transition. There will be a smooth transition from one government to another. From one government to another. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no attack. There will be no attacks on America. On America. Because of the church. Because of the church. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Elections in Ghana. Elections in Ghana. It will be smooth. It will be smooth. And God will speak. And God will speak. Pray. Pray. The Lord sustain. The Lord sustain. And keep your family. And keep the family. Your children. Your children. Pray. Pray. Somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray. Open your mouth that the Lord will sustain your children, the Lord will sustain your family, the Lord will sustain your job, your career, everything. Somebody, the Bible said, No evil shall come near your dwelling, no evil shall before you. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Go ahead, go ahead, clap your voice. Uh, invoke the word of God. Uh, child of God. Uh, you are saying uh, you will not die before your time. Uh, the Lord will deliver you. Uh, the Lord will order your steps. Uh, lift up your voice. Uh, the Bible said uh, God shall do uh, a new thing. Uh, you are saying, uh, oh God, uh, let go dance. Uh, let it happen to me. Uh, let that be a renewer. Uh, a renewer of your mercy. Uh, a renewer of your prosperity. Uh, lift up your voice and pray, child of God. Uh, invoke the blood. Release the blood to go ahead of to you. go ahead of you. That interview. That interview. That interview. That interview. That examination. That examination. Where you are going. Where you are going. Release the blood. Release the blood. Release the blood. To the level one. To the level one. To the level one. For the engagement. For the engagement. The wording. Release. 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 The blood. 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 Let it go. 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 There is warfare. There is warfare. In the spirit. In the spirit. But we are winning. But we are winning. Because of the blood. Because of the blood. And they overcame. And they overcame. By the blood. By the blood. They overcame. They overcame. By the blood. But we are winning. We are winning. We are winning. We are winning. We are prevailing. We are prevailing. Prevail. 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 Lift up your hands and close your eyes. Oh Jesus, I can feel the anointing is so strong here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, we give you glory. At the same, at the same time of it comes out. At the same time of it all. It's you that I see. 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 At the center of it all. Come on, let's sing now. At the center of it all, it's you that I, it's see. You that I see. Come on, say it's you, it's that. you that I see. At the center of it all, come on, lift up your hands, oh Jesus. At the center of it all, open your heart to it's you that I see. I want you to connect your faith right now. It's you that I see. Let 
more mercies, let more mercies, let more mercies. We are worshiping. We are worshiping. There is power in your name. Miracles are Unless you are coming to the altar, but movement should cease. Because th there's a miracle here right now, I guarantee you. That interview is a done deal. It is a done deal. Say so the spirit of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. There is a miracle pregnancy that is in the auditorium here. I'm believing God for this couple, but there are two other couples. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The, this pandemic will not end, but your job is about to be restored to you. That's what the Lord is saying to me. You see, those who have not been paying tight after this service, the Lord is arresting all of them. Oh. The, 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 the Lord, come on. The Lord is arresting all of them. So the Lord says, don't think, don't worry about it. Don't talk about tight. Don't preach about it. Preach the word. And you see that there's a prophet in this house. I, I see an arrest in the spirit. Lift up your hands. Oh, Jesus. Where is the oil? What? Give me the anointing oil. Give me the anointing oil. Give me the anointing oil. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woman, walk forward. Yeah, right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me your hand. Put your hand together like that. No. I'm pouring the oil on my Some time ago, I will anoint you. But because of COVID, I don't touch people anymore. So do your hand this way. Go. No. You are not even not supposed to even to touch it. You are not so sure. Now this is the COVID. Everybody's a suspect. Put it over your head right now. The Lord says, I should speak into your life. That mountain is becoming like a plane. Those who must help you, the Lord is releasing them to help you. And then the Lord said, I should deal with the spirit of disappointment. Clap your hands and say, every spirit of disappointment. Say, so get out! Out! Where's your husband? Give me the oil. Open your hand. Take it! Oh, Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. They will not keep you anymore. They will not hold you anymore. Jesus. The Lord said we should deal with Asian gate. And the door that is stopping and that is not opening. Clap your hands and say open. General, give me your hand. You will finish that house with ease. The Lord said, you don't know where the money will come from. But he himself will send angels to come and build for you. Put it over your head. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Why is this place so concentrated with anointing? Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Now rub it over your head and then rub it over your head. Rub it over your head. Sir, sir, sir. Ah, did you pray before you came here today? Did you ask God that I should anoint you today? I've put your hand. I've anointed you for victory. The Lord said, you will never be defeated again. Put it over your head. Put it over your head. Now, I seal the miracle for you. Clap your hands and shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every Asian gate. Every Asian gate. I command you to open. I command you to open. Now. 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 Open. 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 Open.
good news. You'll be favored. You'll be favored. You'll be favored. If you can sing the one again, let it go in the name of Jesus. Let her be the one again. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Professor, declare some things. Declare some things. By your data, I remove death from you. I remove death. I cancel death. I remove death. I cancel death. The Lord will order your steps. The Lord will order your steps. You will be at the right place. At the right time. For the right miracle. In the name of Jesus. Hey! Three days from today. Five days from today. Seven days from today. I release a 24 hour miracle. I release a 48 hour miracle. Kabali be Kataya. I deliver you from evil. I deliver you from the hands of the enemy. Those who must favor you, they have all run away and they are hiding. I bring them from their hideout. I bring out your helpers. 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 May you collide with your helpers. May you collide with your helpers. Receive it. Lift up your hands. The Lord says he has snatched you out of their hands. Oh, Jesus. Jacob is playing. So Jacob left his father's house at the age of 20. Then he stayed in Laban's house for 20 years. Where Laban manipulated and cheated him. Then at the end of 2020, 40, the Lord said it's time to get out of the house of Laban. The house of Laban is a house of slavery. The house of bondage. The house where you are not going to fulfill. This year will not end. Clap your hands and say I'm coming out. Say, so I am coming out of the house of labor. Anything which is holding me. Say, so I lose. I lose myself. I lose my, my husband. I lose my wife. I lose my children. I lose my house. I lose my ministry. I lose my children. I lose my healing. I lose my joy. I lose my celebration. Get out of the house of labor. Come on. Say, I'm getting out. Say, I'm getting out. Say, I'm getting out. Say, I'm coming 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 out. Bring me down, lady. Bring me down, lady. Bring me down, lady. Bring me the lady wearing white at the back. She's very quiet, but the Lord has spotted you for a miracle. Jesus. For your trouble, the Lord shall give you double. Cut. Take. Oh, Jesus. Let me have your hand. Where's your husband? Husband, can you run? When I saw your husband and I knew I had prophesied over your life before. That was, was it last year when I came here? In London. That's why I prophesied over you. At that time you hadn't met this woman. Okay. 
And then I prayed and I prophesied. When I saw the woman, the Lord said to me, Oh, why are you disturbing him? I didn't connect the two, but when I saw the woman, the Lord said, The woman sitting over there is the wife of a millionaire. I say poverty, spirit of poverty. I command you, get out of my house, get out of my bloodline. I didn't come to America to look at buildings. I came here to prosper. Say I will prosper. I will prosper. Say I will prosper. I will prosper. Clap your hands and give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. The moment I pour the oil upon you. Why are you crying? The Lord said, death is cancelled. Yeah. Husband is crying. Wife is crying. It means that they, they, they are the only people who know what is happening in the bedroom. And they are so amazed that, look at where she was sitting. <laughs> and she wasn't even praying in a violent prayer. She was just sitting down. And then the Holy Ghost said, that woman, is crying inside but today deliverance has come to Zion Remember Emmanuel, so so you see if you don't have a ministry in this in this town you see that people will be hurting that is why I get angry when I come to America and Americans have turned ministry into entertainment I get angry because people are in pain and people are suffering and they have come to hear the word of God and people are coming here to speak English lift up your hands See, I can guarantee you by my work with God and in these recent times, the wisdom God has given to me as a patriarch and as a father. Doc, I can tell you. Unless you don't have a desire. Unless you haven't seen what you are looking for. Whatever you have seen and whatever you have desired, You are about to touch it. No, but you are about to touch it. He went to Maryland and saw. He said, if God will do it for Reverend Emmanuel, God can do it for me because God is not a respecter of persons. And God is not partial. Yeah. I just have to find out what Reverend Emmanuel did. That's all. I saw that he was faithful. He was committed. He was hardworking. So I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be hardworking. I'm going to be committed. That's it. <laughs> and the same God will come through for me. He, he won't do anything new. He will renew what he has already done. <laughs> Clap your hands and give the Lord a mighty praise.
and my empire in Ghana to come to this COVID infested country for just seven days because I have a friend who has entered into covenant relationship with me. Last year, his daughter firstborn got married. I came to bless the marriage. This year, the second daughter, I came to bless the marriage. And you know the seed, when I saw the seed, you know what I said? I said, hey, he has three daughters. Two have married in, within a space of one year. I have three daughters. Lord, I sow into this anointing. It is only unwise people who don't know where to sow. Tell somebody, tell somebody you are you are very wise. Tell somebody you are wise. Tell somebody you are wise. And tell somebody because you are wise. Tell somebody you are wise. Tell somebody you are wise. Tell somebody you are wise. Say somebody be wise enough to sow. They don't be wise enough to sow. My please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. Give me some envelopes here. My gracious. Somebody say, my Savior, my Savior, if ever, if ever, I love you, my Jesus, So I only moved because God is ordering my steps. Because there is a miracle I must walk into. When, when you respond to this envelope and you get up from your seat and you come and take an envelope from my hand, you have walked into your destiny. Let, let me start for, for those that says that it is time for them to own their building also. So what they have seen God do for this man, God will renew. But at the time when God is renewing, God will give you larger than this one, bigger than this. Oh, yes. Yes. Are, are you clapping or you are doing something like that? Yeah. That's how God works. I want those people to come and take this envelope for me, for me. And you want to sow, the least you want to sow is 500. You want to sow 700, I recommend. And then you want to sow 1,000, I recommend. 1,000, 700, and then the 500, I recommend. Oh, God bless you. Write the check to Royal House Chapel right now. If you want to use the machine, uh, these are big men. Will somebody bring the machine to them right now? Don't go there. Sit down, they will bring the machine to you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, woman of God. What is the machine? Yes. If you want to use the machine, you use the machine. If you want to write the check, write the check right now. Who, 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 you don't want to buy a new building? You are so happy with the one building you have. All right, if you have one building, how many of you are ready for second, third buildings? It is a sign of blessings. Sign of blessings. I used to have one house and I was so comfortable on, to my house. 
And then I saw suddenly that my children were all growing. Four. And they were getting married. I said, he say one house is not enough. Each and every one of them who marries, I need to bless them as they go because they should not go and sleep on the street like I was sleeping on the street. You have one house. I came here to bless you with two, three more houses. My gracious Redeemer. Listen, 500, 700, 1,000. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Reverend Emmanuel, what he said was true. All the monies I contributed to this building they were free. I didn't take from him. 5,000, another time, 4,000, another time, this, another time, that. The only one that I told him you'll pay, the only one that I told him that you pay, which he hasn't paid till today, was $20,000. I gave him 20000 I said, when you, it is well with you, you'll pay me that money. And it's been how many years now? <laughs> eh? Only five years. <laughs> this military man. He said, only five years. <laughs> Can I hear something? Am I not a merciful man? Yeah. To give you money for five years and I'm not worrying you, I'm not asking. Oh, I'm a good man. Put your hands together for Apostle yeah. So, in other words, I came to challenge all of you. Those of you that uh, he's owing all of us, please, Apostle Juno is patient. You to be patient, son. Can I hear somebody say Amen. amen. You are even happy. I am told that they are paying your interest on your credit card. Me, no show. No show. Please help, help him to pay the mortgage on this property so he can help me to finish my oil do. He hasn't contributed anything to the oil do. You have no, you have no share in your father's inheritance. That's a serious one. Eh? Amen. All my sons who have never sold into the oil, don't be careful. You may not have inheritance in that place. It will be difficult for you to preach it. When you are preaching, the Holy Ghost will not move because you didn't contribute. <laughs> Amen. Never fail me yet. Never fail me yet. If, if your money is ready, please go to the water. Spend the one second on the never fail. Somebody yeah. says, Pastor, I can keep 300. Come. That's 250, 200. Come and pick an envelope for me. Come and pick an envelope for me. Everywhere I go, Jesus' love has and never failed. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Please write your check right now and come to the altar. If you want to get and cash, God bless you, though. God bless you. See, see. I know you have supported this building, but do it again. Because God will enlarge your territory. I promise you. God bless you, my son. Happy birthday again. More angels. God bless you, son. Bless you. Pick an envelope from me. The moment you walk and you pick an envelope from me, you have walked into your inheritance. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, It's right on the screen. It's right on the screen. Jesus Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. And say, Hallelujah. I am sorry to somebody's life and I'm weeping. I saw somebody's building. I say to me, 100, 150. Pick a number from me. Right now. 100, 150. Pick a number from me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 150, pick an envelope and get to the altar. More envelopes. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You will never regret it. Jesus. 
Sanitize it before you use your your protocol, your COVID protocol in America is so poor, so poor. Everywhere I've gone, apart from Maryland, everywhere that I've gone here, yeah, it was so poor. That's why the thing has been spiking. So you don't have to blame any devil, you blame yourself. You don't observe social distancing, you don't sanitize, you don't wash your hands, you are so careless. I have come to rebuke you in the name of Jesus to do the right thing. Me, we are coming from Accra, Ghana, and uh, we take the thing seriously, and so we don't have problems. And yet we have the medication for uh, COVID. When we catch COVID, we take ginger, we take uh, uh, Prakese, we take uh, Wintia, and then we are gone. We are, we are, we are free. So, so please, the internet is very slow. Uh, you can do cash up. Uh, if you take your seat, just do the cash up. Or sell. The information is on the screen. Those in the queue, take your seat and do cash up and do sell. Uh, because the internet is very, very slow. We apologize for that. But what they are doing is so important. Let's not rush. Let them finish what they are doing because this is worship. They are connecting to the oil and anointing through sacrifice. And when you worship God, God comes down like Solomon, he will ask you, what do you want? Can I hear someone that say, amen? amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Isaac, give me, give me uh, songs. These people, they are 18 years behind me. 
Let, let, let me tell you why I haven't raised many songs. Because uh, the, the drama can't play most of my beats. So that's why I'm very slow. So uh, today you, are, you, are, you have slowed me. Because most of the songs when I raise, then you are, you are confused. So let's do uh, the one that he can, he can play. <laughs> let's, do, let's do the one he can play. Which one, which one can we play? Give me one. Like. No, just give it to me. <laughs> Brevity, you remember when I used to come to your place, your drummers used to struggle like that. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit came and I don't have that problem again. Hey! I, I used to struggle in Connecticut many years. 